Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be looking at the new items icon in Premiere Pro CS6 and seeing what we can produce. But firstly let's just reset our workspace. At the moment it's looking a bit weird so we can go to Windows Workspace, Reset Current Workspace, yes, and then everything's going to be reset to its out of the box configuration and we're ready to do whatever we want to do with this particular piece of video. But what I want to look at is this item down here, the new items icon. I've already shown you that if you were to drag a media item to that icon and get the plus sign and let go, it creates a new composition which is exactly the same size frame rate as that particular piece of video. And we can zoom in with the new zoom bar down here, just pull that in to zoom in. Now here's a few options that you may not know. If you use your middle mouse wheel to scroll while you're over the zoom bar, you will zoom in and out, whereas if you use your scroll wheel while actually over the media itself, you'll see that you'll be scrolling the media around. You can also do that on these bars here. If you go over the up and down scroll bars, you can scroll audio and video separately. And this particular bar at the top, which is our work area bar, you can scroll that as well. Now, if the work area bar isn't actually completely fitting the whole of your work area, by the way, if you double click it, it always jumps back to being the length of whatever you have in there. Okay, so I've shown you that you can do that with this item, but when you click on it, it allows you to do a whole bunch of other things. For instance, we can create a new sequence. So if we know that we need a new sequence and we know it's settings, you can click new sequence and you can go in and create and name a new sequence right here from the new items icon. I'm not going to create one at the moment, just showing you. And also we can create an offline file. Now you might say, What's an offline file? Why would I want to create something that's offline? Well, sometimes you know that media is going to be coming and you know that it's got to fit a certain period of time and you want to create a, a filler, a holding card, something just to fill the gap up that you can work with until the final item arrives. So when you click that, it says, do you want to create it the same size as your present settings for your composition? which is generally speaking what you want to do, but of course sometimes the footage might be a different size, in which case you might want to change the size of these actual settings. I'm going to click OK, and then it says, OK, what are you going to name it? So is it going to contain audio and video? What sort of audio is it going to be? And then you can name it if it's coming from a tape, and then you can actually name the file, so it's my offline file, and you can give it a description, whatever, blah, 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 and you can give it a scene, you can give it a take, you can even give it log notes. Okay, and you can decide how long it's going to be. Well, the media duration here is going to be 10 seconds. So I can click OK, and you can see over here, I've got an offline file created. And if I maximize that to see it, you'll see it tells me 25 frames per second, so it's fitted in, and it's 10 seconds media duration. But of course, I can always make it longer if I want to. And that tape name and description and log notes and all the rest of it will have come in as well as metadata data that we can search at some other time. So I'm going to minimize that back down again. Now if ever you use this, say I drag it to a new video channel here, and you can see it comes up and it says media offline. But at least you'll know clearly that the media is offline when you actually come to it. And you can trim it and you can do all the other bits and pieces that you might do to any other clip. If you go over the end of it you get this trim tool. That's the trim tool. And I can trim it and make it shorter and take it all the way back up to its 10 seconds. And of course, if I wanted to, I could have created it longer, but I created it at 10 seconds. Now, what if I then want to replace that clip with something? What you can do is you can right click on that clip and you can go to replace footage or link media. So you can link media to it or we can replace footage. So I'm going to link media to it and I'm going to choose the dog pass camera, double click, and now you'll see that it's linked. And when I go to the actual file, it is now the dog past camera file. And if I wanted to, I could have also chosen replace footage in case I want to replace it with something else entirely. So that's how you can take an offline clip and then make it online. I don't actually want this clip, so I'm going to drag it down to the bin here. You can either click and drag it to the bin 
and it says do you want to you can say yes or alternatively you can select an item and just click the bin and it'll do the same thing right what else can we create well we can create an adjustment layer now this is new to CS6 we've not had this before and um, we will be doing a tutorial more on this when we get to some of the effects and color correction but simply put you create a new adjustment layer and again it says do you want it to be the same settings as your sequence and we click OK and we get an adjustment layer selected that what we would effectively do is put it above all the other video channels that we have now the reason that we put it above is that the adjustment channel if you like looks down and if you apply an effect to an adjustment layer it affects everything underneath it so an adjustment layer is going to affect everything underneath and there's an awful lot that we can do with adjustment layers but we'll get to that as I say when we get to things like color correction so I'm going to delete that from my composition and select it in my project panel and just hit the bin to get rid of it okay so what else can we create we can create a new title now we're going to do a whole section on titles but you can create a title from here just a word of warning I generally don't want to create rolling and crawling titles from here but still titles I usually do either do this or use a keyboard shortcut to create a new title and then we have something called bars and tones but please note from CS6 we have two versions HD bars and tones and what I guess is you can only call standard definition bars and tones and they are different so let me just create them both for you so bars and tones it says okay is it the same sequence size yes of course it is okay and then I'm going to go to HD bars and tones again same questions click OK now I'm going to drag them separately to my timeline bars and tones and HD bars and tones and I'm just going to make a bit more space so we can see the difference so if I go over ordinary bars and tones this is what we're used to and when we push play we get a one kilohertz tone and if you want to feel for it there's a one kilohertz tone but notice that you've got a reasonable selection of items here but when you go to HD bars and tones you get a wider selection of items including a grayscale bar here which can be used for calibrating bits and pieces that you can't with the standard bars and tones again the tones the same but you've got a wider selection of items for calibration now this is really for calibration and if somebody is asking you to put bars and tones before something before the video that you're giving them that's going on for broadcast it's there for calibration and generally speaking these days people are going to be wanting the HD version not the standard definition version but of course with Premiere Pro CS6 you've got them both okay what else can we create we can create for example black video now black video is immensely useful as a filler to put underneath things to fill up spaces or whatever but you just create black video and it is a synthetic media so in other words it's not a, an item that's saved on your hard drive it's just a an item that's created inside Premiere Pro we click OK and black video is created and this is literally that black video that you can trim out as long as as short as you require to meet the requirements of your project so black video can easily be created simply by going to the new items icon and it is literally black video you can't see through it until we get to the end here even though you can hear the bars and tones underneath so black video is one way of doing it of course what if you don't want this video to be black well that's where the color matte comes in and color matte is basically video any color you like as opposed to black video it's anything else again it's synthetic it's not created and stored on your hard drive as a media item it's just saved with the project if I click OK I can then choose what color I want it to be now at the moment its default is up at black but of course if I go to say blue what I need to then do is click here to get this circle to move it around to show the different colors and this is the color it will be this top one and as you move it around you can see the color changing and then if you want to change the actual color you can drag these up and down until you can choose a color that suits you and is going to work well for your project so let's say we want something that's pretty much a lime green if you actually know figures by the way you can actually type the figures in here I'm just going to click OK and I can call it color matte but I can also call it lime green matte OK and then it's added to my project panel and when I add it to notice here by the way that I don't have a fourth video channel but I do have some gray area and if I drop this piece of footage any type of footage 
in the grey area, it will create for me a brand new video track. So I let go, video track 4 is created, and there is my lime green mat. So I've got black mat, lime green mat, and after that I've got my bars and tone. So that's how we can create those items. Other things we can create include the rather cool universal counting leader. If you want to look cool, you can create one of those. Again, is it going to be the same size as your sequence? Yes, it is. Click OK. And it's one of these ones that counts down 4, 3, 2, and then all the rest of it. And if you click OK, and you... I'm going to take that to a new composition just to show it to you. And I push play. You'll see it's that simple but rather cool looking starter that you can stick at the beginning of any video to make it look as if you're thus that little bit more professional. Okay, so that's the universal counter leader, great fun. Up to you if you want to use it or not. And the final thing that we've got is transparent video. Now, you might say, why on earth would you create transparent video? Um, actually, initially I thought when I got transparent video that you can use it for lots of effects where you want an alpha channel. But in actual fact, most of those can also be done, believe it or not, with black video. So if I choose black video and drop it here, and I was to apply an effect that required to produce transparency behind it. So I'm going to go to a, a tab here called Effects. I'm going to open up a little tab called Video Effects, and I'm going to open up something called Generate down here. And something that can create an alpha channel around it is the checkerboard where it just puts a checkerboard pattern with holes, if you like, in the middle. And if I grab that and drop it on black video, you would expect to see, say, white lines on black video, but when I let go and apply it and have a little look, you'll see that it's got transparency through it. And you'd have thought that transparent video would have been the best way of doing that, but in actual fact, transparent video has got limited uses, particularly now we've actually got the adjustment layer option. One of the items I found that transparent video does work with, that, that the black video doesn't, if I just take my transparent video and drop it at the top here and trim it out, put it out to the same length as the rest, is actually the generate lightning. And when you take lightning and drop that onto the transparent video, or if you have transparent video selected, you can just double click lightning to apply it. It provides, I'm going to turn off the eyeball for the other two layers by the way, so you can see it it provides lightning which on black video let me turn on something underneath on black video it would be a blue line if you like just on black whereas where you've done it on transparent video you can see your, your lightning directly with a transparency behind it so these are the items that we can create with the new items icon they've all got their purposes and they've all got their values and I've used most of these in different ways at different times so have a play Create all the bits and pieces you want and then save them in appropriate bins so that they're well organised in your project.